Hello, this is Lawrence Lewis. And this is Sister Christian. Today is Monday, March 23rd, 2020. We are two producers on opposite coasts who set out to make a lighthearted podcast about what it means to be a good producer. Now we're reaching out to our filmmaking and live event community to listen to how the epidemic has affected you, your work, and how you're coping. We need to hear your stories. Please send us your questions, your stories, or tell us what's happening with you and your work. You can email us at producershappyhour at gmail.com or better yet, record a one minute voice memo and email it to that same address, producershappyhour.com. Just use the voice memo app on your phone. Follow the instructions on our website, which is producershappyhour.com. Okay, today, Christian, we have an interview with Anka Tommen, who is a producer based here in LA, but she works all over the globe. She has a company called Storyform.tv that she does commercials, content, all kinds of media projects through. And she's also developing a lot of TV and streaming Mm -hmm. content that is really exciting. There's not a lot I can talk about because she she can't even tell me what they all are. (laughs) But she's doing some really great stuff. And so I'm excited to get to her interview uh, today. Oh, I'm excited too. This is going to be great. Yes. Okay, Christian, um, we need to do a little housekeeping. Yes, we're reaching deep into our film and event community. And one way you can help us is by sharing this podcast with friends in the industry. It can be anyone, grips, electricians, PAs, fellow producers, staff members, uh, anybody. Anyone is welcome. Connectivity is important right now, and we're hoping this podcast can help. Yes, so please share and also rate it, too. If you can rate it on Apple Podcasts, it helps uh, it. They uh, promote it a little bit more or get some people's feet. I don't know the algorithm, but rate it, share it. (laughs) I don't know the algorithm. It's like math, guys. It's math. Rate it, share it, tell everybody about it um, (laughs) because we want to stay connected. I think as a community, we're strong, we're resilient, we have ideas, and we can get through this together. We also need to thank some people that help us put this podcast together. The plan was to thank them in every episode, but, you know, there was a big upheaval. So we just started chatting. So first, I need to thank... He's a uh, full disclosure. He's also my partner, Christopher Daniels, who is a freelance creative director, a logo and branding expert and an amazing treatment designer. He does commercial director's treatments and he created our logo and our artwork, which I love it. So uh, I love it. Love it. <laughs> we also need to thank Kyle Puccia, who is a musician and a composer of music for commercials. He created our intro outro music, which since we pivoted sharply, we haven't used, but it's amazing. And thanks again to Rob Bloomkey, who is editing our show. Yes, big thanks. Thanks to all these people. We're going to put contact information for all of them in our show notes. And please, if anyone has any projects out there that require the, the, the talents of these people, please reach out to them. Now's the time to kind of share whatever wealth is out there in terms of jobs or productivity or just something to do. We all need to be there to support each other right now. And I'm sure all of them would be grateful for any work that might be out there. Yes. Also, Christian, we had about five, I think, episodes in the can before the pandemic. And yeah, we shelved like, them. Mm-hmm. They were um, fantastic riveting episodes if that we everyone do say should so hear. ourselves <laughs> if if i may <laughs> we're gonna push those episodes out not now but maybe later this week sometime because we think that maybe you would like to hear some content that isn't you know coronavirus related and well actually you just want to hear some good content exactly so we're going to put those on our website at some point uh we'll let you know when that happens all right christian how are you feeling today? I'm horrible. Oh. I just have I'm to sorry. Say. <laughs> no, listen. All right. So this is what happened, right? I was in LA since January 22nd, basically, on and off. I flew home last Tuesday. We started this up on Wednesday in the middle of wrapping or f- putting the bow on three different um, pending jobs that had, you know, finished up. So today's, um, yesterday, you know, we took a break, which was lovely, um, did some absolutely non-film related things. And then today woke up and thought, um, wow, uh, this is the beginning. This is really the beginning. So I don't know how I'm doing with that at all. The beginning of what? Well, now it starts. 
I mean, yeah. I know that um, for a lot of people, it started the moment that they lost their job last week or this week or whenever they lost their job. For me, like today's mm -hmm. the, the day. Today's the day where I'm like, okay, um, I don't, I don't have anything coming yeah. down the pipe. Yeah. And as freelance people, I've been making my, you know, I've made my career out of <laughs> mm -hmm. getting my job from the next phone call. Yeah. There isn't anything. There There's isn't. nothing. There's nothing. And so. Um, that realization just kind of hit you today. Yeah, mm -hmm. it did. Um, but in a. And I still think I'm okay since, but also to when the, there will be another brick that drops Yes, on me. <laughs> and me personally and me, to right. me as well. It's and so this is, this is filling a void right now. I do think it's doing a lot of good. I also feel like, um, you know, I didn't want to do it today. Mm hmm. But Which is I was fine. like, you should do it. It was fine that I it's felt fine. like that. Yeah. After our interview with Anka, I feel a lot better because Good. she's definitely optimistic, but also real. Her brand of realistic optimism yeah. uh -huh. is something that I could subscribe to for yes. sure. Good. Good. Well, I'm glad. How that, are you feeling? And that just, <laughs> well, that, before we get into me, uh, that just goes to show how important it is for us to be talking. Yeah. Right. It just does. That little it interview does. just kind of changed things for you, uh, put you in a little bit of a better space, hopefully. So yeah, that's why this. That's why I really think this is important. But hey, Christian, if you ever not want to do a do a day, <laughs> just let me know. We'll 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 stand down any day you need a personal. Uh, no, of course, of course, and I realize that. But I also, um, you know, wanting not wanting to do it. This is like waking up and not wanting to go to work. Yep, that's true. Just call in sick. Nope. Just, nope. <laughs> we can't, can't do, do it. That. Can't do it. <laughs> um, just take, yeah. So I feel like um, it was the urge to not do it is what made me do it. Makes sense. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so Lawrence, how the heck are you doing? I see that you are, your background has changed. Yeah, my background's changed. I came back to Los Angeles. I'm actually in my regular voiceover studio here in L.A. <laughs> not an to, RV. Not an RV. Hey, <laughs> it still sounds street. great, though. <laughs> it still sounds great, though. <laughs> we had to come back and get my partner's car and more clothes and just kind of come back to this house just to feel a little bit more normal. Um, not that our Joshua Tree place is not normal for us. It's just this is home home, so uh, mm -hmm. we just need a little... A little moment to come back here and, and, and recharge. So I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. I try to get up Monday uh, like I normally would and shower and exercise and trying to, like, give myself a regiment, give myself a schedule. Ah. Um, uh. You know, uh, like I like you would on any normal day, you know. So mm. I'm trying to like get back to like exercising from home, <laughs> and I know we we mm. produce uh, freelance <laughs> producers. Do they have a regular schedule? No, we don't. So it's already challenging. Now I think it's it's more important to try and figure out a way to kind of structure your day. So that's what I'm working on. Yeah, I'm feeling the pressure of doing that, but not doing it yet. And so I'm waffling between like doing it and feeling better or just, you know, waiting till I'm ready to do it and feel crappy until then. <laughs> so, <laughs> you hey, know, that's where all, I'm at. We're all playing it by ear. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We're all in different places. I know. Um, before we get on to some voice memos and the interview, I want to mention the subscription challenge again because I think that's a lot of fun. Personally, <laughs> personally, I have procrastinated on it. But the chat, but the, I know, I know I didn't oh, do it yet. Lawrence. Did you I know, do it? Because I was, so, I was so prepared to come on and be like, I need more time, guys. Okay, okay. <laughs> but the honesty, I think, is what I'm trying to really do here. And like, yeah, it would save me money. Let's do this. But on the same token, the procrastination is such a delicious little tiny sandwich. The procrastination, <laughs> <laughs> the procrastination is real. Yes. Delicious, delicious yeah. sandwich indeed. Mm -hmm. But guys, this is it. This is the challenge. You know, if you've got nothing else to do right now. Take, take an hour out of your day, look at your credit card and bank statements, and look at all the subscriptions that you have. Uh -huh. We are subscriptioned up to our eyeballs in, in this current society. Maybe there's some we don't need. Maybe you can just turn a couple of them off. Maybe it's not forever. Maybe now. Maybe you don't need, yeah. you know, it. three different meal deliveries or whatever. I don't know. No judgment, no shade, but 
you know, it's a fun challenge. And then you can write cool. us. You can uh, mm-hmm. send us a voice memo. Tell us how much money it's saving you each month. Uh, what What did you lose? If you're willing to share that, I think it's a fun little challenge. So I'm going to work on it. Hopefully I'll have it for tomorrow. We'll see. I feel like that is an unrealistic deadline for me. Okay. And <laughs> Fair enough. And I'm thinking towards the end of the week. Okay. That's All fine. Right. We'll That's see, though. Fine. Like, we'll you, see. I may surprise you and <laughs> batten down and do it. So we'll see. Yeah. Um, stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned. Okay. So the next thing, Christian, I want to talk about, we're calling this episode Inspiration because I was starting with, you know, it's easy to get down in the dumps right now. So mm-hmm. I think over the weekend, I was really starting to see things especially we took Sunday off, yesterday off, right? So I was just exploring what else is going on out there in the world. And there are some things that are inspiring me right now, and I want to share Mm -hmm. that, and I want to talk about it. And I think that can be, you know, I love segments. That can be a little segment on our show now that we're kind of structuring it a little bit is what inspires you today. So I'm going to start, Christian. Okay. For me, I'm inspired by seeing artists, friends, drag queens, performers, musicians, both big and small, producing live content from their living rooms. It's been beyond exciting and inspiring to watch. There's another one coming up. Uh, you know, I like to watch. I, you know, Christopher and I would go out to, you know, bars and see drag queens and whatnot. They're mm-hmm. doing it on a live kind of, you know, uh, conference call kind of app. They're performing. Right. There are like big musicians out there that mm-hmm. are performing from their living rooms. Billboard.com, the website, has a list going of all the live streaming events that are happening on their website. It's called the, oh, wow. it's called the Corona, Coronavirus Quarantine Music Events Online Streams. It's a lot. I'll put the link in the mm-hmm. show notes, but it, it, it <laughs> okay. updates every day what uh, who you can uh, watch uh, on some sort of digital platform. That's exciting to me because you know what? That for me, that's bringing back this concept of live television and live mm-hmm. live like events. Like you had to be there that moment to see it, and those are still some of the highest. If my memory is correct, some of those live TV events that we had in the '80s are still some of the highest watched shows of all time. So I think those moments that bring us all together, I think that's exciting. And that's kind of inspiring me to see people figuring it out at home. Nothing can stop them from being creative and creating entertainment or content for people. And that's that's that got my spirits up over the weekend. I mean, I think there's also something to be said about artists who uh, they're basically donating their time to us. Yeah, we didn't. Um, they're not getting paid to do this. Yeah. They're just sharing how creative and uh, they are with all of us. So, yeah, it is very inspirational. Yeah. What about you, Christian? What's inspiring you? So touched, touched on this as we were checking in with each other. (laughs) But honestly, I'm not quite there yet. I'm working through how all of this will change our lives and has already changed our lives. And I'm not ready to allow for inspiration. Mm -hmm. And then, um, then Anka happened. Hmm. And (laughs) yeah, she made me realize that she's very practical person who Mm -hmm. is just, you know, she's the voice that I needed to hear today that said, listen, we've been through this twice before, at least in my career, uh, 9-11 and the Great Recession, Mm -hmm. as they say. Mm -hmm. And I've been through it twice and I weathered that fine. Um, This is going to be different, but from, you know, necessity um, bears innovation. And so... I think that her optimism is something, her brand of optimism, let's yes. call it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not shiny. <laughs> it's not It's not a, a nice little toy to play with. It's definitely like a blunt, uh, you know, brand of optimism. But mm-hmm. in the end, that's kind of what I, practical, what I wanted to hear. So yeah. it's a good interview, guys. Good. All right. Let's listen to a couple of voice memos we got and then a couple quick news updates and then we'll get to the interview. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So this first one comes from a production designer and set decorator, Randy Hokett. Full disclosure, she's a good friend of mine. I've worked with her many times, but she's feeling the struggle just like the rest of us. So um, let's take a listen. Hi, my name is Randy Hokett, and I'm based in Los Angeles. I'm a set decorator and sometimes production designer. Mostly I freelance with different companies. I'm not working. I was on a film in Syracuse that canceled a week ago yesterday. 
um, sent us all home because of the pandemic. I was hoping to come home to a commercial, but it also went away because of the pandemic. Um, I don't have anything on the books. I don't know anyone that's working. I am staying busy uh, by making art. I'm a fine artist, so I've been working on a male art project um, and also FaceTiming with friends, which I haven't done much of in the past, but that's helping me not feel so isolated. Um, I don't know if I have any advice for other people. Talk to other people when you can, I guess. Um, get a project. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, these are weird times. Thank you. Yes, weird times indeed. So that, um, that voice memo perfectly summed up my inner voice. Yeah. Yeah. Just, um, um you know, <laughs> we don't, what do I do? <laughs> when do I do it? And, um, what can I do? And, um, right now she's, she, Randy is, uh, figuring it out. Yes. She's figuring and it we're out. We're all in the, <laughs> she, we're figuring it out. Figuring it I out. like the FaceTime of friends. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've been speaking to, to, um, f via telephone people, but that just, um, pop, something popped up in my mind. I'm going to write, reach out to my friend Tara and see if they want to do a Google, uh, like a go to meeting or a Google hangout of and get together for a drink that we were supposed to have. <laughs> yeah. I, we're going to start that too. We're actually going to. Yes. We're, we're going we're gonna, to, uh, with our friends, we're going to start a five o'clock happy hour and it's going to be a Zoom call. Uh, uh, anyone can come in, pop in, pop out, whatever. And it's just going to be a daily thing amongst my friends. I think that's going to be nice. I daily. Hmm. Maybe. We'll so... see. We'll see how it happens. <laughs> Standing invite. Well, I mean, that sounds awesome. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> Good. Randy Hokett, so I want to reiterate, she is doing this male art program. Her artwork is beautiful. She has some stunning, stunning pieces, very moving. And she is doing small kind of cash and carry pieces of art that she can mail to you. And so it, it's worth looking at. Her name is Randy Hokett, and her website is Randy Hokett Fine Art. That's R-A-N-D-I-H-O-K-E-T. T fineart.com or you can just find her on Facebook and that's I think where she promotes her her artwork and the, the small projects that she's going to do right now so if you want to support a great artist that's one way of doing it um, but we thank uh, Randy for the voice memo thank you Randy this one came in from Nick Lorenzen who is a production manager let's take a listen hey Lawrence hey everybody this is uh, Nick Lorenzen I'm uh, based in Los Angeles uh, I'm a production supervisor and UPM, uh, currently working on a television episodic production um, that is still currently going on. It's um, Saturday the 24th, I believe, or the 22nd. Um, anyways, uh, we're still in production. We're uh, still doing creative development. Um, we've all been asked to work from home. Uh, they did shut down the office, um, but we are still continuing to work. Uh, we're doing our writer's room uh, remotely through uh, Google Hangouts. Um, we're using our Slack channel for all of our production folks to uh, be in touch and uh, still trying to prep. Um, it is sounding like the client may be postponing this job soon. Um, however, we've been asked to continue to move forward um, as if it is happening. Um, the likelihood of it going on and us all uh, gathering together in a few weeks is unlikely, but um, we hopefully will have it all prepped and ready to pull the trigger when it's safe to go back out into the world. Um, currently, yeah, working from home, I do have two little kids, uh, ages four and two, so that uh, becomes challenging. Um, but luckily, my wife uh, has some programs and things that keeps them busy during the days. And um, then every, periodically, we'll do a little walk around the neighborhood. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's been weird, I'm sure, for everybody. Uh, we're all uh, kind of in the same boat together, which I think is relieving that we're not um, too far distant from each other. But uh, yeah, it's been tough. Anyways, uh, we'll continue to do my thing with production um, until they tell us we can't go any further. Uh, and then from there, we'll um, readdress. Thanks, Nick. 
yeah, I think uh, we, we definitely, we are all in this together, that's for sure. For sure. And I think that um, it's great that they are prepping as though the job will happen and it'll be ready to go when, they, when they're off of hiatus. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Good luck, Nick, out there. Hopefully the job does uh, come back or go through or, uh, you know, whatever. Hope, wishing you guys the best. Thank you, Nick. Christian, we got we got one more in just before we started uh, recording. This, this a surprise one, voice, man. A surprise Love one, it. and this is this is really cool um, because this is you know uh, there's also a whole other side of this. Think about all the actors, right? They, that, right. I know this is kind of a stereotype, and I don't mean to, to push it, but mm -hmm. some Wait of the, staff. some of them have mm -hmm. jobs at restaurants, right? Um, mm -hmm. for, for bartenders, wait staff, all of it. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so not only is that work gone for them. The, oh yeah! Oh, all, good the, point. The film product, the film work, has gone for them as well. Yeah. Um, so I do. We do want to hear from actors out there. If any actors want to share their story, now mm -hmm. this particular actor, she's a voice actor. She's a voiceover friend of mine. Her name's Sarah Starling. Let's take a listen. Sarah Starling, based just outside Manchester in the UK, self-employed voiceover artist. Am I working? Yes. Today's been quite busy with coronavirus-related on-hold messages, some corporate work, and some e-learning too. Have I had jobs cancelled? No, but I don't think that there was anything lined up that was likely to be affected by this. Do I have work in the future? I've had quite a few inquiries today, some from existing clients, others from clients who are new to me, contacting voiceover artists who have their own studios, which fortunately I do. How work will go over time? Nobody knows. Your guess is as good as mine. I've messaged a few people who are potential collaborators who I haven't worked with before, just to offer my skills and to see if there's anything that we can come up with together that will be helpful for clients. Your skills may well complement somebody else's that you hadn't even thought of. Stay in the moment, think creatively, keep communicating, and maintain a presence. I think that's really key. What a familiar voice. Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She, wow. She's out there. She is that out was there. Like, yeah, that was definitely like a nice little um, warming of my ear. <laughs> yes, and that's why I wanted to throw her on because uh, she definitely is an ear warmer. She has such a calm demeanor about her yeah. and bearing, and uh, she's a good one. So that insight, though, does show us that there is some content that is being created out there, right? Yes. So that there is some kind of work. And I think we talk about this in the in the interview later, that post-production can still mm -hmm. Carry on. Animation, too. Animation, mm -hmm. stock footage, stuff mm -hmm. still can be happening. Um, but we'll get into that more, more in, the, uh, in the podcast. But thank you, Sarah, for sending that lovely message. Thank you, Sarah. And thank you for that inspirational um, thought of maybe your skills can help somebody that you didn't think of yet. Exactly. Okay, let's do a couple quick news things, then we'll get to the interview. There's a big update for Los Angeles residents from Eric Garcetti about testing. He says, COVID-19 testing is available today, provided by the city of Los Angeles. We are offering testing to Los Angelinos at the highest risk first. Please help spread the word so we can deliver much needed tests to as many vulnerable Angelinos as possible. There's a link, learn more and sign up for a test. I'll read it to you, but we're going to put it in the show notes, but it's LA COVID prod. So that's L-A-C-O-V-I-D-P-R-O-D dot service dash now dot com that's the link i don't have much more information because i just got that email before we hopped on here to record this episode but that is some good news for at least that's for the some city great of los news. angeles yes mm -hmm. we have an update from a freelancers union as well um, on friday the u.s treasury department irs and the u.s department of labor announced two new refundable tax credits that offer relief to employees small and mid-sized businesses and the self-employed under the family's first coronavirus response act signed into law on mm -hmm. the yep. 18th yes in an in a nutshell the irs will take your taxable profit based on your 2020 income to date prorate it for 10 days, the, which is the equivalent of two 40-hour sick pay periods, and make that amount tax-exempt from both income and self-employment tax. This is huge. This mm. ensures that self-employed individuals will get the same benefits as those who are employed. So please, 
Yes. You guys put together what you've made so far this year and get on it. Yeah, absolutely. We'll put the link to that blog post from the Freelancers Union in the show notes so everybody can go there and learn all about it and take advantage of that of that offer. One more quick update, uh, Christian, last week, as we talked about, the AICP conducted a Zoom conference call, kind of a virtual town hall with more than 500 members of the AICP. Um, mm-hmm. And participants said that the most immediate concern was the issue of outstanding receivables. That means unpaid bills at right. the production companies. So um, the AICP, I, I, honestly, I feel like this headline is a little clickbaity, but the headline from AdAge is AICP calls out brands for owing money to their production partners. Eh, yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of. Um yeah. <laughs> but what they <laughs> but what they what they what they're saying is that brands currently owe more than two hundred million dollars in late payments to its production partners, which is really That's really a lot of money. That's a lot of money. And you know, <laughs> some of these production companies operate on a very thin margin. They and, do. And they can't fund advertising, you know, budgets. That's not their job, right? So they shouldn't have to be funding these budgets. They should be getting paid. But they see these debts as a very, very serious threat to the livelihood of a production of the production community as we're struggling to weather this coronavirus pandemic. The president of the AICP and the CEO, Matt Miller, said in a statement, marketers and their agencies need to ensure that production and post partners are paid immediately for work already completed. This is money out there and the production community needs it. Ultimately, everyone, including marketers, are going to want to get back to a normal level of work as quickly as possible. Yes, we all do. But we'll need the infrastructure to do that. All this money that's owed that could keep that infrastructure in place will ensure that everyone is going to be in a better place and come out of this strong. It's irresponsible for marketers to think that they can hang on to money that they owe. So those are some powerful words from him. I don't know exactly what they are doing other than kind of putting this message out there. Mm -hmm. I'll put the link to the Ad Age article in the show notes, but at least they're voicing some strong words about uh, about this issue. Yeah, I mean, I I can only imagine as well if if he's only using the AICP members, what their outstanding. I wonder how the little guys are feeling right exactly. now too. Yeah. So it I think two hundred million is probably a very conservative estimate if probably. it's only based on the AICP members. Yeah, that's probably very true. Okay, let's get to the interview, but I want to mention again that those two petitions we've talk, been talking about that urge Congress to include TV, film, and live event freelancers in their relief packages, we're going to put those on our website. They still need signatures. So anybody listening, please share them, sign them, and share them with your friends, and let's get more signatures on those, on those petitions. Yes, and we also want to remind everybody that the Freelancers Union has written a pro forma letter that you can send to your state officials to implore them to include freelance workers in their relief package. So even though the government and the IRS have said that they're not going to charge federal taxes and unemployment taxes, we still, you know, would love for the state not to charge us taxes as well. Yes, exactly. So get on that. Get on it. Okay, today we have yet another good friend of mine, an award-winning executive producer. Her name is Anka Tommen. Her production company is called Storyform.tv. She has produced campaigns and broadcast spots for brands such as Subaru, Coca-Cola, Ford, Google, DKNY, all, you know, everything. Her passion for music led her into working on some of the most iconic music videos and concerts of some of the biggest artists, like, you know, Missy Elliott, heard of her? <laughs> Once. No, she she produced the the work it video and all, she produced a bunch oh, of videos wow. for Missy Elliott, <laughs> Missy Elliott, Jay Z, Beyonce, Fifty Cent, Madonna, Ricky Martin, System of a Down. Mm. I mean, all kinds mm. of stuff. And as I said at the beginning, she's also developing a lot of TV projects that are currently under wraps. But uh, you know, she's a she's a powerhouse of a producer, and this is a great interview. We're lucky to have her. So let's take a listen. Welcome, Anka. Welcome. Well, hello. <laughs> so um, why don't you start by just telling us a little bit about, you know, I, I read a little bit of your bio, but uh, why don't you just start by telling us a little bit about uh, what you, what your work is, what you've been doing for the past uh, few months before all this started? You mean before the uh, pandemic? Pandemic. Yes. Yes. 
BCV took a hold of before it? coronavirus. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I'm a producer, predominantly work out of LA, based here, and um, I have, I think what I thought was going to be smart, diversified a little bit the genres in which I'm working on, mm-hmm. so I used to do a lot of music videos and <laughs> commercials, yeah. and uh, a lot of commercials, <laughs> branded content, right. and the last two years, um, I sort of redirected some of the resources and some of what, what I do into more... Um, TV development, feature film development, and, and working in, in, in long form, mm-hmm. specifically with the new streaming platforms and so on and so forth, which has been really great. So um, the most current recent project is a documentary we've done in a partnership with um, a music station called Double Lab here in LA and uh, PBS KCT, a local TV station, and it's focused predominantly on music. Mm-hmm. LA jazz scene and the new new musicians that come out of that. So we were just in the middle of post production, actually, very close to bringing it to the finish line in the offline, when everything just basically got shut down and and we had to sort of figure out how to get our editor working from home and 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 how to send edits out and cuts out and getting notes and we're slowly um, coming back around to figuring that process out right now. So you are figuring out a way to make uh, your current project still happen. Indeed. Yeah. I mean, for one, and and then, you know, we also were in the process of bidding and awarding Mm -hmm. five other projects. (laughs) So they very quickly, so I'd say it took about from the announcement and what was going on in Europe, specifically Italy at the time, which was not even that long ago now, two weeks ago mm-hmm. maybe, when we sort of first understood what, this, mm-hmm. what the scope of this all mm-hmm. is, right? Um, one of the projects we were bidding and, and sort of getting very close to awarding was taking us from the U.S. to Italy in May and June. Wow. Um, the other project was had us shooting in Dubai at the end of May. Um, another project had us going to London, mm-hmm. And, and all these things over the last two or three months. So the first project pulled out pretty quickly. They were like, look, it was also around a hotel, a big hotel brand. So they were like, mm, until we really understand what's mm-hmm. happening here, I think we just sort of pulling out of this because the tourism industry obviously got hit pretty quick and, and very fast, very right? Rapid. So, yeah, exactly. So they kind of understood very quickly that this wasn't just going to blow over in a couple of days. The other folks, it took them all a little longer. And so we tried to figure out ways, okay, so if it's in Italy and Spain, maybe we can just redirect and find things to do here, you know. And then it sort of became this frenzy of, like, let's budget, let's figure out, let's research. And then I think um, once the travel ban was official Mm -hmm. and we also understood that this was not going to stop at any borders and it was just a matter of time before it would hit the U.S., um, yeah, everybody was like, you know what? Let's take a beat. Yep. Mm-hmm. So very quickly, it looked like a very uh, productive, fun summer and um, turned into sort of a, of a desolate thing. So yes, then the all, all the focus went on to, okay, let's finish this project mm-hmm. so we can have a sense of completion and also sort of, you know, get this done um, if we possibly can. It doesn't require going out mm-hmm. right now. It doesn't require everybody can work from home, which is nice. Um so that's sort of our focus, you know. I'm I'm still bidding. There's a couple of shows that have come up now and said, look, we want to start as soon as this is mm-hmm. over. But the hard part is we don't know when that is, right? Exactly. So, and, and what the world will look like after that. Can we travel? Can we go places? You know, can we shoot places? What, how many, group, sort of, how many in the group of people? What we implications? Can have? <laughs> right, exactly. Essential the crew. Will come up on it. Exactly. And where can we find a script person who can also VTR and do sound? <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, all of this. So it's been an interesting, you know, I think there's two, two ways that I realized in the commercial industry was pretty quickly of a sort of, it was very quick sort of, let's just shut it all down. There was a yes. commercial we were going to shoot in April. It was like not happening. Mm-hmm. In the TV world, I find people have a little bit more faith because things tend to take longer and, get pushed longer three months is not really a big deal for anybody you know so i think there's a bit uh it's a different take and a different understanding for how people want to deal with it and they just sort of keep pushing forward 
I'll just roll with those punches for now. That's good. So there's a little there's a little optimism there, at least in the TV film side of things. Yeah. <laughs> I would say, I mean, that's, yeah, that's, those are the folks that have stayed communicating, have, you know, we have conference calls, we, everybody works from home. It was very quick where people were like, look, we can't do our meetings anymore. You know, we had big meetings scheduled last week, Monday, and with like, you know, all the creatives and development people, and that just had to happen online. And, you know, we had to kind of resort to other resources. Mm -hmm. So, um but we're trying, at least everybody's sort of trying to keep a good attitude. And I think in part also to keep a sense of normalcy, Yeah, right. you know, yep. to, to sort of be like, okay, let me just, you know, keep working on it. And we just don't want to give up yeah. hope or faith that this will result in, in you know, we want to stay productive. Yeah. And I think that's human nature. And that's why Christian and I are doing this. You know, we just can't sit around and mm-hmm. wait. We just want to, we just want to be productive. <laughs> Maybe that's a natural right. instinct of all producers. But yeah. uh, well, yeah. I think, yeah, I think too, uh, what you said is very true about commercial and uh, advertising, not panicking, don't want to say panic, but immediate, it was immediate because we are a very quick turnaround platform so it's very fast lived and and i think some of these folks are going to wonder like okay who's going to really gonna think about buying a car or yeah. i know I don't know a motorcycle or you know the next yeah. awesome thing out there when what we really sort of need to figure out at the moment i think is okay i'm gonna get through another month or two or three right, right. uncertainty i think is just a big um well it's uncertain. It, 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 it does make you wonder. Yeah, uncertainty <laughs> is uncertainty. And it, it sort of le- leads you to this place where you're like, okay, if I'm selling things, what are people going to buy in three exactly. months other than... I was, I, was I, ta- I was talking to, to a friend of mine who produces a lot of um, car spots, mostly radio car spots. Mm-hmm. And I think that what, pe- what marketers are going to turn to is just messaging. We're yes. He- we're here for you. We will be here when you're ready. You know, just to kind of stay in front of people and... And and to your point, Anka, you know, you said post production is still kind of chugging along, which is good because technology has now allowed everyone to stay home and and True. do mm-hmm. that kind of work remotely. So you know, there is a, I, that's why I do think audio and podcasts and that kind of production, I think, is still something very strong that could mm-hmm. could mm-hmm. really kind of uh, see a lot of people through. And then I remember after nine eleven, a lot of commercials. Old commercials were renewed and then new tags put on it, mm. or it was a lot of stock footage and animation with voiceover. And so that, mm-hmm. you know, that's the post production industry still has a little bit of a, you know, a beacon in, in all of this because um, they could still essentially keep working, you know. 9 11 um, forced us to, to cut budgets and do all these other things, and all of a sudden it became a a necessity to think differently, right? Like, Mm -hmm. okay, so film is expensive. It's time consuming. People want to do things faster. You want to see right away and all these kind of things. And it really, what I found like right after 9-11, music, digital streaming was like all of a sudden a big deal. And and same thing with the production of how we Mm -hmm. would go about, you know, producing our content and and what type of content, right? Mm -hmm. So then all of a sudden websites popped up. So to your point, it does like these things sort of tend to have a a moment in time thing that that helps break break off something different and new and and I think we just need to explore that and focus on on those type of things. It's funny you should say that because this morning I was like, okay, how does one turn this around? What is a need right now? What can we sort of service in and where do my skills apply? Right. Exactly. I I had um talked to a couple of friends over the weekend, art people from the, you know, local 800. And and, mm-hmm. and they have had, um, I guess their unions approached them and said, look, Costco is looking for decorators to bake cakes, you know. I'm like, yeah. okay, well, that's, a, that's quite a turn. But <laughs> well. unions are actively, you know, <laughs> unions are actively trying to figure out how to, at least that's what it seems like to to keep their people employed and figure out other options and opportunities that at least lend your skill set to mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. that is needed currently, right? Yep. Yes. And so, what what are you doing otherwise, personally, to kind of stay sane and stay active? Obviously, you still have some projects that you're working on. Uh, is there anything else that you're doing? Other other personal projects, or just are are you going out? Or are you going for walks? Or what what else are you doing? 
you know, I do a little bit of all of these things. I think last week was was a very interesting week because it sort of was that frenzy, like, okay, now everything, mm-hmm. we, we got to figure out what we're doing and how we're doing it. Let's do this. Like, yeah, it, it, was it was a crazy was... panicky week mm-hmm. where it, you just didn't really have time to think about it. And it was so much beginning. was happening so mm-hmm. quickly yeah. mm-hmm. that it really, for me, is just starting to all think, sink in. Like as of this weekend, I'm like, okay, hold on. So... A, there's going to be a ton of bills to pay. I still don't know <laughs> what that is going to look Nobody like. Nobody knows right? what that's going to look like. <laughs> no. <laughs> we're not, so we're not one talk about is that. it right? But <laughs> so one is it okay? What can I do to sort of feel better about the situation I'm in? Right. So I think one is stay active in in terms of yes, I do go for walks. I have a dog, so the necessity is there that I do that at least twice a week. But I'll try and make it a more enjoyable experience than most times. Yeah. So the beach, you know, is one option. I'd say go out in nature and just sort of enjoy what the good things are right now, which is there's a lot of clean, fresh air in LA that hasn't happened like this in a very long time. Yeah. There's like nature is is starting to kind of just really truly blossom. It is spring, so you get a lot of beautiful, just awesome things happening. Whether it's trees and there's a lot of rain, it's just starting to be green. So I'm thinking, okay, let's just really connect on something that is um, beautiful and nurturing in a way, right? Um, I cook a lot mm-hmm. more more than before, more than now, usual. Uh-huh. And and I think that's another thing is just sort of you know try and, and keep healthy and and focus on that. Do a little bit of workout, maybe just 20, 30 minutes a day, but you know it also keeps your mind sort of not from from kind of going mm-hmm. around in circles. Um, meditation is something I started mm-hmm. a while back because I think it's just something we should do in the industry. Yeah. Helps us kind of get through a couple of different things. Yeah. Um, and then reading. Like, um, look, there's a, there's a few projects that I connected with, with other producers and creatives, and we're just taking the time right now to really um, be like, okay, we're not under some crazy deadline. We don't have right. to finish this, like, by tomorrow. And... How can we make the things that we'd like to make better, you know, and, and really take this time to to really like noodle it and and have fun with it and really oh. start a creative process, a true creative process that's not rushed. Mm-hmm. And, a little bit yeah. of housekeeping sounds like a little bit of. <laughs> Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I found that people have been very receptive because yeah. everybody's at home kind of needing something to do. Right. Yeah, so. Right. Absolutely. Um, and it's finding, and I think if you find your like-minded tribe in that way, you know, mm-hmm. then you just, like, much like what you guys are doing, I think that's great, is doing an outreach into the community and give give people a bit of a voice. And also knowing that you're not alone, I think, right. is, yeah. is very helpful. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We're definitely all in, in this together, and uh, it might might be a minute. <laughs> yes, so we can have a lot of these. But no, this is great. I think... <laughs> <laughs> what you guys are doing is really, really great. And and not just because of the times we're in, but even better now. You know, because yeah. I think it's nice. I've had a few production people reach out and just being like, hey, how are you doing? And what do you think? And I'm like, you know, you just have to take it day by day, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and really not be afraid to also, if if there is a struggle you're experiencing, you know, just kind of put that out there and see if, Collectively, we can yes. figure something out. Yes, you know? exactly. So it's a time to innovate, stay busy, find some creative projects. Do you have any other advice for all the film crew out there that's uh, wondering when when they're going to get back to work <laughs> or how to weather the storm? It's or, a tough one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is a really tough one. I think um, we can't underestimate what this does, right? Mm-hmm. So I have a lot of friends also in the restaurant business and hospitality service Mm -hmm. so however and that is something we should maybe try and figure out how that would work similar to what co-pros did a really a long time ago Mm -hmm. and and ended up in at least a producer's health benefit plan right Mm -hmm. um i think is for half for half there's an idea there's an idea there that is worth pursuing and and it it, i was definitely there in 2006 it was (laughs) a good shot it was a good and shot. Exactly. So, um, and I do know a lot of people that have been able to take advantage of that plan in that way, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, I think that 
what the restaurant business did and hospitality business, they all got together and say, and, and they are filling out petitions. They are petitioning. They are going to their respective governors and starting to say, Hey, we're taking a big hit here, right? How can we, how can you guys help us? And what are we, what are you guys doing for us? And I think mm -hmm. respectively, there are three big hubs in this country between New York, LA and Atlanta. And those are just the three big ones where a lot of people, I would presume, have been hit hard by. Mm -hmm. And from one day to the next, there's no like, hey, you just didn't prepare. No. So, well, how could you? No. I'm not. <laughs> no. the, the world wasn't prepared. Not, no. right? So you're expecting me to be prepared? I don't think that's fair. So I think there might be a moment, and we'll see how long this lasts, but over the next two weeks, where we all want to maybe just keep the dialogue going and then right. figure out, okay, mm -hmm. What does this really mean to all of us? And it's not just the IA and it's not just the DGA and it's not just SAG and WGA. You know, everybody was starting to renegotiate contracts and stuff. It's just mm -hmm. sort of like, let's come together as an industry and really figure out what we can do for one another. And to your point, I think, you know, podcasts, that's a great idea. Now, how does that help a grip? I don't really know. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, may I, may well, I say that I, I do know? Um, I, yeah. <laughs> I shared this podcast with a key um, grip friend of mine just to mm -hmm. say, hey, this is what we're doing. And he was like, wow, I never really knew what a producer did before. So now I understand some of the questions that you're asking and those types of things. So and then he also, you know, it was a it was a nice way to reconnect. So, yeah, I do think that we can help each other from just a social way. By nature, I think we're all facilitators and storytellers. And I think just mm -hmm. giving people community to, just to share their stories, share ideas, just helps. I don't know how, you know, no one can be helped right now financially. You know, we can't answer what's going to happen with our careers. But uh, at least we can all be there for each other and just try and help us feel a little bit closer in this time of isolation. Maybe somebody will come up with an idea that we're all like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Let's we are a bunch that. of people, right? <laughs> exactly. And we have had experience solving all sorts of problems <laughs> over the course of time. With I mean, help. you need Everyone. an elephant. <laughs> I got one right here. No problem. All right. I can move that mountain. Right. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> need a couple guys. Exactly. exactly. So... You're right. I mean, actually, you, that is very, very true. It's like we, we shouldn't really underplay who we are and what we do and, yeah. and how we've been doing it on a daily basis almost. Mm -hmm. So um, it just takes a moment to maybe just get over the initial yeah. kind of like shock. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I'm not ready to move past that yet. No, I'm me neither. Like, <laughs> I'm not. Um, but I think I will be. Yeah, Soon. I think that's a that's a very very good mm -hmm. point, and I, and you know I guess it's true. I mean, I have these conversations with a, um, you know, my partner's brother who's a prop master, and he's always like, I don't even know what you guys do, and I'm like, really? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, I know what you do as a prop <laughs> yeah. master. We know what you do, so, but they so don't really know what point, we do. Yeah, let's take this this moment also to educate and yes. and. You know, and we do build teams. Mm -hmm. we, we're mm -hmm. part of that's part of what we do. It and and it's a good skill set to have. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yep. So I like that. Yeah. Yeah. But, and I think as producers, we, we were a little bit calmer in a in the midst of a of a crisis. <laughs> and yes. Help. Calmer on the you surface. Just don't show it. We just don't calmer show on the how, surface. On the for surface. Sure. Yes. On the surface only. Because inside. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Anka, if you had a little crystal ball, maybe this is an unfair question, but if you had a little crystal ball and could look into the, the industry, either TV, film, commercial, events, whatever you want to speak to, what do you see us happening in the next three, six, 12 months from now? That is a very interesting question. <laughs> but I think, look, I think what you brought up earlier, which is um, a lot of this is now being driven by messaging. Or this is sort of the first step, like, hey, we're here for you. I'm sure everybody's getting these emails every day. You oh, know, yeah. Delta Airlines is here for me right now. And I'm like, yeah. okay. Well, Every nice. corporation. Everything. <laughs> Everything I, everyone but I've I, ever bought right. one thing from has emails. Exactly. I'm like, well, yeah. I guess that's great. But um, <laughs> I'm, I'm hoping and thinking that, honestly, times like this will maybe install a bit of a sense of the next level of authenticity and, and actually sincere awareness 
And I think that goes both ways. For one, it goes from a corporation standpoint, and it also will be the consumer who's going to really look at, okay, you send me this lovely message, but when I really, you know, however this is going to sort of unfold for everyone um, mm -hmm. as an individual, I think consumers will walk away from this and really understand who was there to actually help mm -hmm. and who has helped. I hope so. Because if you really look at it, so I think there's already, I mean, look, I, it's hard to keep up with all the news right mm -hmm. now, but I know Dior and a couple of other companies in France have restructured their factories to produce san sanitizer, hand sanitizer mm -hmm. that they can oh, then great. distribute to hospitals. And mm -hmm. they can do it all for free currently. And I'm sure the government is sort of subsidizing it mm -hmm. one way or another, but it's certainly not a, you know, $80 bottle of perfume that has whatever margin it has. From what I understand is currently true for the auto industry here that has restructured mm -hmm. and redid some of their factories and manufacturing to do ventilators, right? Wow. Yeah. So GM, um, mm -hmm. right? GM. Mm -hmm. And and I think there's been talks with Elon Musk, maybe whatever you think of the guy, you know, to help use his facilities for other repurpose. So I think what it really means, and, and I would hope that corporations feel, you know, that they should try and figure out much like we are now figuring mm -hmm. out a way to be supportive and helpful and, and put your profits aside for a minute. Yeah. And coming out of this, I think as a consumer, you will hopefully have thought about this in a different way. And it's like you, A, can make a difference by the way you consume and how you consume and how you're being talked to. And um, I think that will probably be reflective in what we're doing next. And, and that may or may not mean you continue making commercials in the way we used to. Maybe not. Maybe it's a different way that we reach out. You know, yeah. I don't think... I think the industry will will probably reconfigure some of that. You know, it might be smaller clips, much like branded content has been already doing on social media and whatnot. Mm -hmm. you know, where you really truly semi inform and also, mm -hmm. you know, get your brand and right kind of <laughs> in the smaller right hand button corner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you, you see, mm -hmm. like I think it's it's messaging is going to start becoming more and more important. And I think it's also something that people are now with the time they're spending on the internet and you know, whether or not you did X amount of hours before it probably increased. I mean the internet slowed down, I don't know, everywhere right now yeah. for all sorts of users. And I think that just means people are on it consistently. I think you want to catch up with the news, but then you start going down rabbit holes, right? Oh, yeah. 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 YouTube rabbit hole comments. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Anka, you, you, we once were chatting about um, a, a certain type of corporate structure, something similar to that of like Tom's or, you know, some sort of company that gives a certain percentage of their profits back to a nonprofit organization or a local community organization and and that that kind of was you know looking back on the, the responsibilities of corporations the entity was to not only provide goods or service but also to give back to the community in which they operate in and i think much of what you're saying kind of lends itself to that that you know mm -hmm. i i believe that audiences or customers will be going to be looking at companies that actually act for mm -hmm. the greater good or the local good or the local economy mm -hmm. I think people are going to be more favorable of companies that maybe take this this kind of new corporate structure that has that component of of giving back. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, I think you hit it already. It's I think that however whatever happens and however long this is going to take and however we come out of it, there's going to be you know it, it'll, it'll be a different time as we know it in terms of what people need and how we function. We're not just going to go back to the way we were because yeah. I I think people right. are having to either pay back loans or, mm -hmm. you know, have maybe, you know, decided to take a different job altogether. I don't know, you know, but so I think that um, we are together between the, the corporations, we as the people that are customers, consumers should ask questions and make sure that we are being supported in that way, right? Mm -hmm. How that's really going to trans, what that translates to, I think that I don't know how that really works, but I do believe corporate structure will have to at least think on it and make it a part of a strategy, right? Mm -hmm. And in, in order for the economy to sort of slowly come back 
for everything to start falling into place again. I mm-hmm. think there's there's going to be somewhat of a need to that. And to your point, I think on a local level, that's even more interesting to mm-hmm. see because oh, that's yeah. where we're experiencing it now, right? Absolutely. Your support system is now, you're relying heavily on your local support system in a global crisis. You know, elderly, like, I don't know, you know, but I go shopping for my neighbors who right. can't really leave the house mm-hmm. right now. I'll reach out to people when I know that they may just not be sitting at home alone because they don't have a partner or they don't have this or that, you know, just to kind of be like saying hello. So I think there's an awareness of that. I know families where the kids are home now, parents have to start homeschooling and do a job yeah. and be at home. They, so yeah, yes. hats off to them. All of this, <laughs> you know, your life is turned upside down. And once all that is starting to come back, I think by then we, we sort of are like, okay, hold on a second. <laughs> Here's what I need, whatever that may Here's be more of, you know, maybe uh, I need more wine or maybe I just need a better meditation <laughs> session. I don't know, you know, or both. I think a little bit of everything. Exactly. So it's all about balancing, I think. And, mm-hmm. and that's, we, we won't really know what that looks like until we know where our needs are and, and how everything is, is playing out. But I think that's balancing these things is going to be very important. Yes. Well, from a corporation standpoint, I did see today, it's the first one that I saw, GM of Cadillac has the first commercial out that says, if you need help with your loan, we can make deferments or, you know, just let us know and we can, you don't have to pay back your loan for six months or something, whatever it was. Um, But Mm -hmm. yeah, they're the first ones that I've seen to take the responsibility to offer that to people instead of being made to do it by the government. Mm Mm-hmm. And I yeah. think that's commendable. I think that yeah. is what it takes right now. I mean, look, there was 9-11 and then the other big crisis that we went through. 2008. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it it meant for a lot of businesses to close. Mm-hmm. And it was hard on a lot of people. And And honestly, though, what I also recognized is a lot of people came out of it in a different way. Some yes. people took a hiatus of albeit not voluntary hiatus, but then they were like, you know what? I always thought, and it was one executive producer who shall not be named, but who owned a company. <laughs> um, come on, who, name him. <laughs> maybe kidding. we can talk to him and see if he'll come on this podcast <laughs> and talk about it a little bit. Because that was actually, it was, I was one of the first calls. So he had this really great commercial production company. It was super busy. He had one of the best years and then 2008 hits, right? Mm-hmm. And, He's in the middle of three productions and uh, Chrysler was one of them with a very big, and, and they couldn't pay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he just basically said, look, this was the big, big beginning of me having to figure out like, okay, I'm going to do this. I have to pay people. I have to do responsibility. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden that I shouldered as an owner of a company, I realized what it really meant. It's good. Well, the times are good, but then when you get hit with something, it becomes really, it weighs heavily, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. he decided at the time to close up his company and really pay out everybody and do the more or less right thing as mm-hmm. much as he could. And um, he took, I think, about a year to really have that all sink in, give up his house, his everything, and and um, came back and was like, you know, if there's one thing I did learn, it's I really never wanted to run this company and I didn't. I, I did. I thought I wanted it because I wanted to, you know, have the flashy, nice, shiny things. But the responsibility ultimately that weighs on you and that you have to worry about, like making, you know, X amount of uh, jobs happen so you mm-hmm. can keep paying. And, and, and it gets harder and harder, as we all know, for a lot of folks out there already. Right. Yeah. He said it just wasn't why I got into this in the first place it just dawned on me that this isn't really why I started working in the film industry and uh, bless you. And it allowed him to rethink it. He got back into the business, but as an EP, he didn't really open up a big flashy job. He started really kind of chipping away at it. And now he's a very happy man. Mm -hmm. Um, Family's happy and (laughs) he's living and it was probably something that he didn't expect to have happened as he was going through, you know. I know other producers that ended up opening flower shops afterwards, right. yeah. mm-hmm. you know, that would leave them. But they all, some of them have come back and others are like, you know what, it's really much more, you know, this is really my speed now. So 
Um, not sure where we start with this, but I think there's good stuff that can come of it. Absolutely. There's, it's, a, it's a topic I think Christian and I keep, everything keeps coming back to it. Um, you know, it's like the world has hit the pause button to give us all a minute to breathe. Mm-hmm. Stop polluting, stop consuming, and just think about your life and what makes you happy and what's important. And it could be a big shift for everybody. People could come out of this much happier people doing something much more fulfilling that they didn't even know was, you know, within their wheelhouse. And, you know, whether you like it or not, you are working in media, whether you do commercials, whatever we do to to, entertainment. Right. And and you do have a responsibility. It does Mm -hmm. not matter if you're making 30 seconds, 10 seconds, two hours, 10 hour movies. We have a responsibility. And I think one of the things that also stood out to me is like all of a sudden it's like, well, all non-essential business has to close. And there's very few left that's deemed essential, right? Mm -hmm. With that in mind, obviously, there's a lot of fat that can be cut. You know, Mm -hmm. our lives have gotten really convenient. Very convenient. So not to say, I mean, it's nice to have that. And I think, you Mm -hmm. know, as a whole, we all worked on it. But we also may have done it, you know, with a little bit of a... I'm going to put it not as mindful as we may want to be right. about it, you know? That's not all. as a community, mm-hmm. more as an mm-hmm. individual. And if we can sort of steer it back to something that becomes, to your point, a little bit more meaningful or mm-hmm. deeper, then that's nice, you know? And after 2008, I think there was a moment where that happened because mm-hmm. Ford was, made a big splash by not having taken a bailout and sort of continuing on their, their thing, you know? So I think there's different ways. And if, if there are these funds that are being released now, which they very well should be, it's also, you know, then yeah, please defer my car payment for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. saying yeah. I don't want to pay. Yeah, they're I'm passing saying, along as they should. Give me a minute to yeah. really figure out <laughs> what we're gonna do here, right? Yeah. I think that's right. that's more or less what we all mm-hmm. sort of need to take away from it is it's we're in it together and I think hopefully um, you know, that's gonna last a little bit longer than than just this um moment in time. Anka, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, you two have a great day. Thank, thank you for you. having me. Yep. You too. And, I hope, um, you know. and thanks for your I, time. Bye. Bye. Oh, wow. Adorable. Adorable. She's adorable. Yes. Mm-hmm. I think she uh, is pretty inspirational. She definitely uh, goes along with the inspire theme that you have mm-hmm. for today. Yeah. And I also think that she got a pretty good handle on multiple facets of our industry, it seems. Yes, for sure. So, dang, she's she's pretty awesome. Yeah. All right. Much thanks to Anka Tomlin from StoryForm.tv. Some nice stuff out of that, right, Christian? There's some great stuff out of that. Yeah. Lots of things to think about. As she said, we can't underestimate what this has done to our industry, but... You know, when we keep coming back to it, it's like we hit the pause button and maybe we all need to rethink how we kind of operate in this world of commercials and in the world of production in general. You know, it's time to take a beat and really think about what we can do for our community, for each other and how to keep creating and how to adapt to what has happened. Yeah, I think we're as uh, especially as a creative community, we're pretty we adapt pretty fast yes. to what thing how things go much faster. I've noticed than um, my family members who oh. aren't part of the industry or just yeah. anybody when you call out of the ordinary. You say you're in a small town <laughs> in the yeah. middle of the U.S. Um, and you call somebody and say, "I need this tomorrow." Yeah, and yeah. It's a three week order situation. You know we're used to this and so i think we're going to adapt pretty hopefully pretty fast and i think a lot of us in the film and event industry are are fortunate enough to have been freelancers and kind of work this way think about the Mm -hmm. people that have nine to five jobs Mm -hmm. of course there's a lot in the industry as well but nine to five office jobs where you come home at six o'clock and you don't there's you're you're done. done those people that are now forced to work from home and try and learn this new lifestyle of, of working from home and taking care of kids and all this kind of stuff, it must be baffling. Hats off to them. For Hats off sure. to them. <laughs> We're fortunate to, to be able to have this experience to, to weather through it. So a big thanks to Anka Tommen. That's it for today, guys. Stay safe and stay connected and definitely stay active. Yes. Wash your hands and don't touch your face. You know who you are. Stop it. I've seen you do it. <laughs> Knock it off. <laughs> Stop <And> it. <laughs> we're also going to, you know, we're going to throw in social distancing, guys. Seriously, keep six feet away from people you don't know. 
Please. Let's, uh, let's put an end to this as best we can. This is all for us to do. Uh, it's all in our hands. And do not be afraid to tell somebody to stand further away from you in if, a nice if way. If they're too close, mm-hmm. yes. Yep. Be sure to send us your voice recordings or an email to producershappyhour at gmail.com. I get people asking, when do you need voice memos by or did I miss it? We're going. This is daily, guys. Every day. Keep sending your stories. Please. We need to share. We need to connect. We need to keep talking so we can weather the storm. Christian, how do people get a hold of you directly? People can get a hold of me at sisterchristianproduces.com. And Lawrence, how do people get you? Me, I'm at lawrencetlewis.com or for voiceover, voiceoflawrence.com. All right. Perfect. Thanks, everybody. See you tomorrow. Bye.